This is how it happened. This is how the Batman died. And you know, it just so happens that this little story that Gordon is going on about, it's just an autistic kid that can't stop screaming. You see, Scarecrow, who I'm pretty sure I remember dying two games ago, well, he calls in a jihadi terror threat, leading to all of Gotham being evacuated. So then Batman runs around for a bit until he finds a chemical plant where he gets high as shit with the Joker, who I'm pretty sure is uh, also dead. Huh. He then decides to get shot because Batman literally just can't die. Ever. Then Batman starts turning into the Joker, which is legit just some fucking fan fiction level shit. But don't worry, Scarecrow, or as I would more properly call him, the Weed Man, comes in clutch and fills the entire city with his homemade weed mist. Uh, and then, you know, Batman kicks the shit out of some random orphan, uh, gets his identity revealed, and then he dies. So all in all, uh, the story alone uh, definitely gets a 420 out of 10, simply for all of Scarecow's weed clouds. Uh, now, you may have heard less autistic reviewers say that this game makes you feel like Batman. And that's true. Uh, that is, of course, if being Batman just simply consists of clicking the right mouse button. Also, there may be just this little controversial part of the game I have neglected to mention thus far. Uh, and I'm not going to, because I like to stay on the positive side of things. I would categorize Battle Block Theater as a party game, where you fucking your friends over is what makes the game actually fun. Now unfortunately, because I can only play with myself in one way, and there was no one else playing the game, I had to play the party game with the funny haha -ha man. Boy, that was quick. And there was thunder. Boom! And the lightning. Boom! And the wind. Boom! Alone. And you know, to put it simply, it wasn't very fun. See, there doesn't seem to actually be any lose condition, so you can die as many times as you would like. And as long as you collect at least three gems, you can move on to the next stage. And you see, when your game has the same level of stakes as going to the museum, in that there are none, you see, that's a problem. You know, even if that problem wasn't there, you've probably noticed that you can't play the game in ultra-wide, making it completely broken and unplayable. I want to inform all of you that this is the one and only game on Steam I have ever played that for one has ads and two has practically no sound whatsoever. Also, as you may have come to expect at this point, uh, this multiplayer-based game has no players playing it. But you know, at least that does mean I'm the best Battlestick player in the world, with zero points. This game does the whole blade and sorcery thing incredibly well, making you feel very powerful, but not powerful enough to remove the stakes of each encounter. Now, despite how well polished most of the combat is, this game does fall flat in that, while I do enjoy the whole epic stabby stab, at no point is there any form of goal to justify said stabby stab other than just kill that guy. See, this lack of purpose breaks any immersion you may have had, making it feel like nothing more than glorified Wii Sports. I couldn't even start this fucking game. I am incredibly sad to say that despite searching for 10 minutes, I could not find a match to play in this Minecraft ripoff first person shooter. Surprisingly, I was actually able to get into a match. There wasn't anyone in the match with me, but you know, that's more than I expected from Blockade 3D. And you can also screw up uh, building a penis in this game, which pretty much makes it perfect. As soon as I opened this game, I noticed a few glaring problems. Uh, firstly, uh, the game can't be played in ultra-wide. And secondly, uh, the mouse, uh, you see it's misaligned, so it doesn't actually click on what you're trying to click on. But, you know, despite those issues, I continued into my first match. And you know, after getting used to the janky-ass fucking mouse, 
it went pretty well. Uh, until this cuck sent a BFB, which stands for bro. Fucking don't do that. That's gay as fuck. My second match uh, went terribly as my meth-coated brain forgot to use any explosive towers, uh, which my opponent may or may not have exploited. After those two crushing defeats, I then became determined to win at least one goddamn match. And after one more humiliating defeat, I did, because my moron of an opponent didn't have any explosive towers. After winning that match, something began to dawn on me. I was actually having fun. Uh, which, you know, isn't supposed to happen, uh, so I immediately closed the game. I was walking down the street when out the corner of my eyes. Borderlands is a good game, and that's absolutely unacceptable. So I made sure to play through my least favorite part of this game, Crom's Canyon, while also being a little bit underleveled. Now, you may be wondering, why is Crom's Canyon the worst part of this game? Well, you know, firstly, actually getting into said canyon uh, is pure goddamn AIDS, as there are a bunch of turrets on the outside, and if you try to shoot them, you know, they'll just kill you immediately, uh, leaving you with your only option being running to the entrance and hoping you don't die. Now, once you're actually in the canyon, don't worry, you're fun, it's not over yet, as there are badasses sprinkled pretty regularly throughout the area, and they will absolutely tear your asshole open. Additionally, uh, while you're going through this area, uh, Krom is, you know, shooting at you the entire time from his turret, and you know, that just really enhances the entire fucking experience. And then, uh, you know, once you actually get up to Krom, uh, to, you know, kill him, uh, don't worry, there's another fucking badass up there. Uh, but you know, once you take care of him by hiding like a little bitch, uh, you can actually kill Krom. He even drops this unique pistol. God, I wonder if it's good. Borderlands 2 is a whole lot like Borderlands, except for the fact that it is an even better game with better guns, better characters, better environments, and a better story. See, Borderlands 2 is so much better, in fact, that there isn't even an area that I particularly dislike. Oh, you know, except for uh, that shitty-ass, badass Asosaurus Rex. Yeah, that that's kind of a shitty fucking boss fight. On my first attempt, I was, uh, I was a little disappointed to find uh, that my game uh, it was set to true Vault Hunter mode, uh, which definitely uh, did not produce uh, my desired result. Uh, then once I switched my game uh, to the proper mode, uh, I found that I needed to play through the entire DLC. And do you know what the worst part of that was? I fucking enjoyed it, which is not what is supposed to be happening right now. But you know, eventually, I did make it back to the Badassosaurus Rex, only to find that the game will not allow me to not enjoy myself. Borderlands the pre-sequel is just a shitty version of Borderlands 2, which means it's still better than 90% of games out there. So instead of playing the game, I decided just to listen to Pickle speak. It's your lucky day! You can all think run from the Drakensberg! Brainbread 2 is a zombie survival game without the survival part. You see, the zombies are very fast and basically instantly kill you, not to mention the fact that round one starts with 65 zombies to kill. Now, take a guess as to how many of these zombies I was able to kill. 40, 50, maybe even 30. No, all wrong. My kills ranged from zero when I blew myself up with a grenade because I thought they worked like CSGO to a maximum of 18 on attempt Still got first place though. If you took Super Smash Brothers and replaced all the Fire Emblem characters with Ben 10, Laura Croft, Kung Fu Panda, and Adventure Time, you would get Brawlhalla. Now, the only other notable differences between this and Smash are that each character has three sets of moves. One for when you are unarmed, and then two separate sets uh, for each of the two different unique character weapons. And also, you know, the fact that the online works. Now, before heading into the ranked mode, I decided to get some practice in casual. 
and contrary to what you may have thought happened, I won. So you know, feeling prepared, I went head first into a ranked match. And and that one, that one went a, a lot more like you may have expected. <laughs> This is objectively the best game I have ever played. I mean, just look at it. It fucking explains itself. It's Monopoly, but with microtransactions. 